I had no idea that marriage meant in his eyes that you had to make love with them whenever they wanted you to make love to them be it 16 times a day or once a day you, I didn't it never even entered into my brain that part of a, a married, marital relationship you're brought up with the idea that, that the woman must do as, as the husband bids and that obviously follows on through to, to the sexual side of everything I'd go to bed about seven or half past seven every single evening and go to sleep just to avoid him and in particular not having to make love to him in the evening. I used to sometimes lie there and, and think that perhaps it would be better to commit suicide. I, I, it's very difficult to describe the desperation you feel when you really think that you, you're trapped and you, you can't there, there is no other hope for you and you have to stay with them. It doesn't occur to you that actually you could just stand up, get up and walk out the door. The start of the girl's journey to a separate identity is her sexuality. But she's never free from the need for her family's approval. That pattern continues even in her working life. I think um, certainly by the time I was in my teens, I had decided that it was safer for me anyway to follow the path that my dad uh, would prefer or would lay down in a way. The reason I went to study medicine, I, I'm sure I would really never have gone if it wasn't a last desperate thing to win my mother's love, my grandfather's love, a whole family sort of tradition, if you like, of which you know they wanted a doctor in the family. And I suddenly changed my mind. Instead of going to Cambridge to study geography, I decided to study medicine. Big mistake. Magda gave up her medical training when she fell in love with Brad, who worked in the city. She became a successful financier in her own right. Now alone, without a career, she's trying to understand how it all went wrong. Having studied medicine for my mother, um, I then got a chance to go into the city through Brad. Can I need some responses on this? One, two, ten by two. Although. In the beginning, I was learning. By a certain stage, I was certainly pulling my weight. I remember very clearly a moment when I was sitting on the dealing desk and thinking, well, I don't care. I don't care. I don't have to compromise. I don't have to sort of play the corporate game. Because in the end, I'm sure I'll get married and have children and be dependent and somebody will support me. And so what do I care? I mean, it's ultimate complicity. I um, studied to be a solicitor and hated it. I hated it. You know, I couldn't. Why? I, I hated offices. I hated playing that role of business. And um, oh, I can't think why I hated it. I just, I, I couldn't do it really. Are you doing marks on APT? It's very difficult for women to to really be clear. I certainly never took anything really that seriously. So yes, I was successful, but it was a little bit of a game to me. Can I check it? I am trying to sell. Jim and I were buying the 101 calls ahead of I was a partner at Lazar Brothers Capital Markets Group which was highly prestigious and extremely well paid because I was a partner and I had a percentage of the profits. And when Brad wanted me to come back and work with him again, um, well, actually, I got pregnant. That's what happened. And as you focus on your baby, you may like to imagine a really beautiful colour with a lot of light in it surrounding the baby. 
Imperia, Empirical, Criterion, Ventura, Sterling, Altiora. And just whatever you feel you'd like to say to your baby. And every baby loves to be told you're wanted and welcome here. I need that bread. Step mark. Okay, what time do you guys send on the market? Yeah. I got pregnant and he said, look, you know, um, have an abortion. Don't tell anybody. I wasn't allowed to talk about it to anybody. And in a couple of years' time, we'll get married and have a family. As a partner, I gave up a million dollar bonus to go and be nothing. I didn't insist on any title, any stock, anything. Now, a man just wouldn't have done that. Why did you want to do that? Well, you know, because you say, well, it's for love and because you trust someone. I trusted this man. I trusted this man. I would have laid down on the road and let him drive a car over me. You know, I really trusted this man. Many of us feel we cannot, in the end, ride the uncomfortable conflicts and emotions stirred up by the competitive world of work. But for women, there are other possibilities. Another world of motherhood and children beckons an escape. I kept pushing myself along, as I did in boarding school um, for the A-levels. I, I did it because something told me I couldn't get out of it. But I, I did it half-heartedly, you know. I didn't do it with, with all of me in it. And... And then I became pregnant, and it uh, saved me. up with Brad, a friend of mine asked me what I enjoyed doing, and I couldn't answer the question. I was just so out of touch with myself. Um, yeah, I could enjoy anything, but the fact was I had no idea what I enjoyed doing. And so when I got the settlement, and I had some money, and I could do whatever I wanted, I really didn't know what to do. And I bought um, this, this chateau, this big house in France which had been my mother's fantasy, not mine. Now, she didn't ask me to do this. It's, it's much more subtle than that. You internalize your mother's fantasies, you internalize your mother, you internalize what she wants, what will win you approval, perhaps. So I bought this giant house that maybe the whole family could get together in and all this business, and it was ridiculous. And I kept wandering around this house, wondering where my script was. I think, um, I think the thing is that with my mother, she was very, she is very aware of her feelings and of feelings. She didn't pretend they weren't going on. But the, the, I have a sense from my childhood, really, that she felt she couldn't change things. And I think um, the effect that had on me was that there was a real sort of gut determination not to let anybody get in between me and my children. The world of motherhood seems so safe, so secure, an intimate place from which all conflicts, anger and disappointment can be banished. 
At last, women feel in reach of an identity founded on loving and being loved. But even these strong walls can be breached. If motherhood is used to escape the uncomfortable conflicts of the outside world, it can be perilous. Buried feelings have a habit of coming back to the surface. Try and throw it to the mummy ones. Why? Because the daddy ones push. I think when I, uh, when I was pregnant, I do remember saying to somebody, I'm frightened that, that she won't love me, that my baby won't love me. And this person said, all you have to do is love her, is love the baby. And I think that's maybe my fear, actually, that, that um, she'll look at me and see somebody who isn't there for her. Do it. You say sometimes you hit her. Yeah, I have. I have hit her. I have gone for her. You know, lost my temper and gone for her. Yeah. And I, I, I wouldn't do that with Sam. I don't know why, why that happens. I don't do it a lot or anything, but I have done it. Sometimes I, um, I don't support her in exactly the same way that I feel my mother didn't support me. And I, uh, I don't like that. I, I hate myself when I see myself doing that. And then, and then I get cross and then I shout at Zoe. My own baby, he's 10 now, he's quite a big baby now. I, I definitely was sort of terribly idealistic and, I don't know, somehow wanting to be there completely for him. And I held him all the time and never went anywhere without him for the first three years. And I think that I was the one that was insecure and I was the one that needed the holding and, and uh, the reassurance and so on, and I was sort of trying to do that to him, in a way. So I think um, I was somehow compensating for something in myself. And in a sense, he became how I was. It was as if he was copying how I felt inside, or how the little girl part of me actually felt insecure and lonely. That was what he was feeling, and copying in a way. If motherhood is used to run away from yourself, it shouldn't come as so much of a shock if a woman mistakenly believes she has to run away from her children to save herself. Many mothers do this emotionally, withdrawing from their children. But Eva did it literally. She left three young children and only now in a new marriage feels able to re-establish a relationship with them, starting with weekend visits. Well, I actually, I was the one who instigated the idea of having a child. I, I was the one who, who wanted to have the child. When the child actually came along, I didn't, wasn't a, a person anymore. I, I was a mother. I wasn't... I wasn't an indivi individual with a brain anymore. I was just the mother of his child and I wasn't allowed to let the child out of my sight. And I had obligations towards the child, sort of far more responsibilities than I thought he would ever expect me to have. I, I still can't work out in myself, why didn't I just simply get up and go with the one, let alone when, you know, Staying, having, producing three children, and and then deciding that it really, I really had to go. I thought you left them in. I resented them. 
even though I, I know it was a, I'm an adult and I consciously made the decision to have them, I actually resented their being there. I resented the time they took out of my life. A lot of it had to do with me feeling that I was unable to control my destiny. Therefore, having produced one child, there was no other way out, and therefore I may as well stay on and have another, and, and another after that. I, I resist her being a child. I resist being her mother. I want her to be more grown up than she is. It's when she needs me that I find it difficult, actually. I think I, um, I feel that I'll fail her. Why do you feel that? Because your mother failed you? No, possibly. Mm. Possibly. Both your daughters would say that they lived their lives in very complicit ways, that they have tried to please other people, particularly other men. Would you take any responsibility for that? I would. Yes, indeed I would. Because I think that it was the way I brought up. And unfortunately, or fortunate or whatever, um, I, in a way, passed it on to them. And therefore, if they lived to please their partners, it, yes, in a way, it is my fault. How do you feel about leaving your children now? I feel extremely guilty because I consciously made the decision to have three children, knowing that I wasn't happy and knowing that really the relationship wasn't going to last. But still, there are three young children in the world and I've left them and they have to get on with life without me. So that's why I feel guilty, because I was in the wrong. about becoming a mother yourself? I just don't want to abandon my children. I don't want to repeat a pattern. Um, it's very frightening. It's, it's, I, d I don't want to do to my children what happened to me. I did my best. And as far as I can think and evaluate my behavior and my parenting and whatever, whatever, it, I couldn't have done better. I love them to distraction and I wanted to do my best. I would have given everything to my children. Do we really know the complicated messages which pass between daughter and mother? The love, the identification, even the jealousy? Will my daughter also one day rage at me for loving her too much or too little, for wanting too much from her or holding her back? Your pain is real, but, but the reality of this is zilch. And I remember as a child, you said you're evil, you're spiteful. Do you have any idea what that does? What that does to my life, how it makes me feel that everybody who might know me, everybody who might love me, will eventually find out I'm flawed. Nonsense. Everybody has a spiteful gene. You're negating what I feel. I mean, the only I'm way, the negating. only way in the end that you feel is when you just feel someone might love you just because you are. Maggie, you take your genes. Now, if I may say so, 
you take well, it doesn't your matter. Genes. The fact is the pain is there and I don't give a damn. And no, the yes, fact you is do. you go to therapy and you try and work it out yeah. because, yes, I mean, in well, the end, intellectually, I can say, yeah, of course I'm not inherently spiteful. Of course I'm of not course inherently not. evil. No. But the fact is, if you've been told that since you were, as long as you can remember, it takes you years to work it out of your bloody system. Not as long as you can remember. You know, you do exaggerate. You take it after your mother, you do exaggerate, and you know, I was given to Why it. Why can't you just acknowledge my pain? Why can't you just I say, do. fuck it, I'm sorry? But it isn't real. It just doesn't exist. Because you're loved, and you're cherished, but and you've got you're... to feel that. You've got to feel that as much as you feel the but pain. It is in your head, and you have to get rid of it. And you make me cry because I was, you know, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's it's so stupid that it makes me cry. Right, let's write down Joseph. Do you feel that you have sacrificed and maybe are sacrificing a lot of your own individuality in trying to be a good mother? Yes, I, I actually, I know it's hard to believe because to many people outside I seem like a kind of successful professional woman. Actually, I spend a lot of my life feeling like a drudge. Um, I, uh, there have been, a, you know, several moments in my life where I've actually run away from um, career, a, a career. One was when one of my books was published and there was a lot of, sort of media attention to it. And I think I must have got pregnant practically the week it was published. And it felt more comfortable, actually, to be honest. It felt much easier for me than having to go on with some of the kind of you know, what I perceived as sort of falseness and hypocrisy and the competition and the individualism. I think um, breaking with complicity is when you can at last actually look at what your real feelings are and own up to them, you know, whether they're anger, frustration, envy, competitiveness, any of those feelings that, you know, all of us had such difficulty in our childhood acknowledging um, breaking with complicity is about actually knowing who you are it's got nothing to do with leaving people and leaving your responsibilities and do you feel you've reached that stage yourself now no I, I mean I, <laughs> I I I don't at all I, I think I can write about these things and think about them because I'm still very much in them and grappling with them I don't feel at all as if I've really emerge from them. I'm still wracked by guilt, wanting to be an ideal mother, wanting to have a career and feeling guilty about it. All those things are still, you know, my preoccupations. I haven't broken with them, but I made the first step, which is sort of having a think about them.